Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this 19th Sunday of the year. But today we also remember and celebrate Women's Day. And because we're celebrating Women's Day, we also have a special guest preacher this morning, Melissa van Bullion, who is a minister at Mosaic Church here in Johannesburg. So we look forward to hearing her message. The psalm today, we pray that we would see the mercy and salvation of God. We come before the Lord, knowing that we are sinful, that we are weak, and we ask the Lord that we too may see his mercy and salvation. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And let's pray together now our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, when Elijah came to Horeb the mount of God, he lodged in a cave, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small still voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the center of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Let us, Let us see, see, O Lord, Lord your, your mercy and grant us, us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let, Let us see, see O Lord, Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him, and guide his steps on the way. Let us, Let us see, see, O Lord, Lord your mercy, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs of their race, according to the flesh in the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 I long for you, O Lord. My soul longs for his word. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the crowd was satisfied, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, where he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, have no fear. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, and it is so good for me to be with you today. At first glance, it might not be completely evident that there are a few similarities between where Elijah finds himself and the predicament that the disciples of Jesus find themselves in in today's gospel. Elijah, a prophet, is fleeing for his life into the desert. He's under the wrath of Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, who was the king of Israel at that time. And even though Elijah is alone and probably feeling helpless in the desert, he is not abandoned by the God for whom he fearlessly prophesied. In fact, God draws near in some incredible ways in those moments. Physically, God is providing food daily for Elijah. And spiritually, God is providing his presence, his nearness in a divine experience of that still, small silence. Or as another translation words it, that tiny whispering sound. God is near. God is close to Elijah, closer than his own heartbeat. And yes, Elijah might be alone, but all will be well. And that divine presence of God reassures him and, and gives him courage to continue his journey. And so, like Elijah, the disciples of Jesus are also facing peril. They are sitting in this boat and they are fearful. The wind is tossing and turning their boat and their fear of capsizing is exasperated by the fact that they do not recognize Jesus at first, and they mistakenly take him for a ghost. But even though they are still in the midst of the wind, and they are still in that boat, and they are still facing fear, Jesus' divine presence, and his voice, and his encouragement brings life. When he says, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Now this is the good news to us today. That no matter what storm or wind or boat you are facing, no matter what wrath you are under, no matter what desert you are finding yourself in, Jesus, God says, take courage. Do not be afraid. The one who calms storms, the one who walks on water, the one who speaks to us in the midst of the earthquakes and the thunders of this world and our life, he is near and he is with us. Now the gospel reading says that it was in the fourth watch of the night that the, the disciples were sitting in this predicament. And the fourth watch of the night translates to roughly 3 a.m. in the morning. And all of us know that sense of fear at 3 a.m. in the morning. When you can't sleep, this is the time where you start tossing around and getting worried. When you are waiting for someone, 3 a.m. turns into a nail-biting time waiting. When you are waiting for that phone call, or you get that phone call, or hear that knock on the door, 3 a.m. becomes that palm-sweating time. And today in our world, 3 a.m., we are, we are experiencing that 3 a.m. moment emotionally. Many of us, many of us are sitting with the fear and the guilt and the, the emotion 
of that 3 a.m. overwhelming sense, we are tossing and turning. Some of us are experiencing 3 a.m. in an ethical sense. Temptation, resisting evil, becomes harder when the rest of the world is asleep. Some of us are experiencing 3 a.m. in an ecclesiastical sense. We are worried about our congregations and our members and our, our buildings running dry and empty. Some of us are experiencing 3 a.m. in the sense that I'm not finishing these projects. I'm not getting to everything I need to do. When you are sick, the pains and the sadness and the overwhelming um, uh, experience of having to get up and facing another day becomes worse at 3 a.m. Those of us who are lonely or who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we know that that sense and that, that experience of loneliness and sense of loss becomes worse at 3 a.m. August is Women's Month in South Africa. And for many women, it is 3 a.m. And on the 9th of August, we honor those, those women, thousands of women who marched from the Union buildings in August of 1956 who, who protest again, protested against the, the past laws, and they stood, they, they were a prophetic voice for a non-racial and a non-sexist society. And yes, we've taken a few steps, but we have a long way to go. South Africa, in many ways, are in 3 a.m. times. But the good news remains, and we are encouraged that at 3 a.m., Jesus walks on that water. At 3 a.m., the storms can be calmed by Christ. And at 3 a.m., we can receive the words and the nearness and the, and the presence, divine presence of God when he says, take courage, do not be afraid. Today, just maybe three steps that can help us to, to step into the freedom of fear in our, in our 3 a.m. lives today. In the first place, acknowledge the fear. In my preparation for today's message, I read an article by the psychologist David Benner, and I found it so insightful. He was writing about fear in general, and he said that the greatest issue or challenge of our time in an anxious and fearful society is that frightened people cannot admit their fear. And I found that so, so true, that those of us who are fearful, we cannot admit that we are frightened. We deny it. And the problem with that is that if we cannot acknowledge and admit and voice our fear, then it plays out in different ways in our lives. It comes out as anger. It comes out as control over someone's life. It comes out in us trying to be, to be busy in compulsive behaviors. We all have fears in our lives. But if we can't admit them, if we can't acknowledge them, they will play out in dangerous ways in our life. What fear is there in your life right now? Some of us are fearful of intimacy. Some of us are scared that we'll be alone. Some of us are fearful of pleasure. Some of us of pain. Some of us are fearful of, of success, others' failure. Some of us are scared of, of losing our image or losing control. Some of us are scared of what are people thinking about me, and others are scared that no one is thinking about me. 
Some of us have the fear of life. Some of us have the fear of death. Some of us are scared that there isn't a God, and some of us are scared that there is a God. What are the fears that is being um, swept within your inner world like a, like a current, and it's influencing the ways you are acting out? Can you acknowledge them? Can you, can you externalize them? Because when we can do that, we can do the second step, which is voicing our fears to Christ. That is the next step in finding freedom. That is the next step of getting out of that boat and walking on the water with Jesus. When we voice our fears to God, two things usually happen. In the first place, when I can tell God what I am experiencing, when I voice my anxieties, my worries and fears, a deepening of my relationship and my friendship with God happens. A trust comes. A, surrender, a surrendering posture comes. And the second thing is that I can get some breathing space. I don't know about you, but have you noticed when you, when you share an experience with someone else that is close to you, it's almost like that thing gets a bit lighter. Oh, there we go. I've put it in the light. It's not that, that mountain on my shoulders anymore. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. If I can use a metaphor or an image in my own life, I see it like an elevator that I'm standing in front of. And often, I have to place my fear in a box and place it into that elevator and press the button so that it can go up. And some mornings I wake up and stand in front of that elevator and the door's open and the box is there with the fear. It's not gone. And I found myself having to do that 20, 50, sometimes 100 times, where I need to lay down and let go of this fear and let it go by giving it to God, saying it to God, voicing it to God. And then one day, one day, that elevator door opens and the box is gone. The third step. In finding freedom in the fear is acknowledging the authority of Christ over life and death. That's what the disciples did. When you read that gospel story and you go on, you see that they acknowledge Christ is the one who has the authority to calm the seas, to walk on water. He's the one that has, has authority over life in the sense that he, he, brings, he brings equality with human beings. He brings love. He brings grace. He brings peace. He brings life. He's also the one who has authority over death when he brings Lazarus back to life, when he conquers the grave, when he conquers death and he's resurrected. And he says to us, in the midst of life, in the midst of death, follow me. Nothing can separate you. Nothing. Not the mountains, not the valleys. Not heaven, not hell. Not life and not death. When we can acknowledge Christ's authority over all, we are invited to trust. We know that we can get out of the water because he says who he says he is. We trust in what, what is true, that what he says he is going to do and who he is, that that is true. So where are you today? Have you, have you shown up just as you are, acknowledging this is, this is where I'm at, this is my 3 a.m. moment? I'm tired of denying it. I'm tired of sweeping it under the, 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 the covers. I'm tired of finding and seeing ways that these fears are playing out that is unhealthy, not only for me, but for the people around me. 
Have you voiced it to God? Have you spoken to him about it? Have you told him? Have you allowed him to let his, his deep love and friendship meet you in that place? Have you allowed yourself to, to realize that when I've given it to God and, and that fear comes up again, I can do it again. I let it go. Because the one who walks on water is inviting me to do it alongside him. I acknowledge the authority of Christ. I acknowledge that he's inviting me to live life to the full. That he is the, has the power over every 3 a.m. experience in my life. That is the invitation. And that is the good news of God. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we have heard the good news of a God who walks with us. Let's respond to that good news now by praying together our creed. And today we'll pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard the good news spoken to us. And we're invited in the 3 a.m. moments of our lives and the life of our community and world to bring our needs before God. And so we do that now as we pray together our prayers of intercession. Let us pray that we, like Elijah, will take time out from the winds and earthquakes of our lives to find the Lord who constantly reaches out to us in gentleness and stillness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves when we feel doubt and uncertainty, that we, like Peter, would reach out and take the hand of Jesus when we feel frightened or like we're sinking in the storms of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our world during this time of uncertainty and turmoil, that we would hear the reassuring words of Jesus. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. As we face failing economies, corruption, the COVID pandemic, and the loss of so much we took for granted, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all women on this Women's Day. We pray for all those women who work with us and for us. We pray for our mothers, sisters, wives, colleagues, and friends. We pray that every woman's life would be valued and that all women be treated with respect and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for women who suffer the scourge and evil of gender-based violence, for an end to violence against women, and for the women, for the many women who cry out, Lord, save me, daily as they face violence and harassment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the perpetrators of gender-based violence, that men who inflict violence upon women and children would turn from this evil. We pray that they would be held accountable and that justice would prevail. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we rely on your mercy. And so we present to you these our prayers, those we have spoken loud, but the prayer to in the heart of each one of us, asking that you hear them and answer them as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. This will be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty Creator. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave you thanks and praise, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the life-giving bread and the saving cup, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who reached out to Peter, who taught us to call God our Father. And so now we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to pray for peace. Let's pray for peace in our own hearts, in our families, in our communities, our country and our world. And we pray. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God the one whose body was broken and whose blood was shed for people like ourselves. How happy are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends and all people, to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. And let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Melissa van Bullion, who shared with us this morning. She's a minister at Mosaic Church, as I said, here in Johannesburg, and for her message this morning. It's refreshing to hear a new voice, so we're very grateful to her. We wish you, wherever you are, a wonderful and blessed week ahead, and we also invite you to take up that message to bring to the Lord those 3 a.m. moments of your own life. Let's ask the Lord now to bless us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And I should have said as well that we wish all women a very happy Woman's Day and that we hope today the women of our country will feel respected and loved by the way that we choose to treat them, not just today, but every day of the year as we live together and hopefully build the kind of community that the Lord himself would recognize.